Hey, 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 everybody. Here to vlog about Starter Wives. Um, I missed a couple of vlogs um, since the show aired on January 29th. So I'm just going to backtrack and go over the first um, couple of episodes and then I'll talk about the one tonight. So in the first episode, we were introduced to six women who um, their common bond is they've dated um, guys who are in the public eye. We have Josie, who's Floyd Mayweather's ex-girlfriend and baby mother. Monica, who's Funkmaster Flex's ex-wife. Um, Zakia, who's the ex-girlfriend and baby mother of Mano, the rapper. Tashira, who's the um, ex-wife of DMX. Liza, who's the ex-girlfriend of um, Lamar Odom. And then we have Cheryl who's the um, ex-girlfriend of Phil Caruso, who's a um, mobster. And on the first episode, for a few seconds, I don't know if she's going to be on the show, um, we had Shaniqua, who's the um, ex-girlfriend and baby mother of 50 Cent. So, you know, each of these ladies are going through breakups and, you know, ups and downs with their exes. Um, Tashira is dealing with you know the infidelity issues and you know things like that that destroyed her marriage with DMX and not only that he has six other children out of wedlock with countless women so um and this all happened within their marriage Monica and Funkmaster Flex are getting divorced um Liza is still living with the fact that her um her ex-boyfriend Lamar Odom is married to Khloe Kardashian and their relationship is public so you know everybody's putting out there that you know she like he he left her for Khloe or you know but it's a tough situation for her because he just left her for dead after their um youngest son passed away um Zakia is well, she's the ex-girlfriend of Mano, like I said, and she's dealing with the fact that Mano professed his love for Little Kim in a song, but in another song that he made about Zakia, he professed how much he wished she would die or ways to kill her or something like that. What kind of bullshit is that? But okay. Um, let's see, who did I miss? Josie is, you know, dealing with the fact that Floyd Mayweather is engaged but she admitted that they still mess around with each other and Cheryl is um, dealing with the fact that her ex-husband is a mobster and you know he's incarcerated and you know that that lifestyle just like my wives that lifestyle is like you know taking this toll on her or whatever so each of these ladies they have like a pretty good history you know something that's pretty good like entertainment so in the first episode, you know, the ladies gather, they bond or whatever. And, um, you know, Zakia explains to them about her relationship with Mano, how she, you know, was with him when he had nothing or whatever. So Monica has a, a blog that she does. I think it's called Dirty Little Secrets or something like that. So she has a blog that she does and, you know, from what Zakia knows, one of her blogs has something to do with Little Kim and Mano. So, I know Monica brought up having a party, you know, to like, not launch it, but you know, promote her blog. And she said that she knew Little Kim and she was going to invite Little Kim. So, I think Tashira told Zakia that Monica was thinking about inviting Little Kim to the party and that did not sit right with Zakia. So Zakia was like, she's a catty little bitch and blah, blah, blah. So we get to the party and you know, all the girls are there and walk Zakia. So, you know, as Zakia's walking down the stairs, she kind of missed a step and fell. It was kind of funny, but she walked it off and she, you know, shrugged it off and continued. 
So then she approached Monica and was like, you were going to invite little Kim to this party knowing how I feel about her, knowing that we have a beef or whatever. And Monica was like, I don't even know, you know, your situation like that as a kid. is like, well, it's on your blog. So, you know, something. So basically, Monica was just trying to play dumb or whatever, and it wasn't working. So Zakia got mad and, you know, they were arguing or whatever. And I guess security put her out. I don't know where Josie came from, but Josie jumped in and added her two cents and Zakia was ready to fly back down the stairs and beat the holy hell out of Josie, which would have been well deserved because Josie is a shit starter. And as I go through each episode, if you don't watch the, the show, you'll see why. So, you know, it ended on that note. The next episode started with, um, you know... Liza going outside to um you know get Zakia and calm her down or whatever and Zakia is like you know I'm a good person you know when people push me to that limit then it's a whole nother story you know Liza is you know basically like I understand how you feel I know what you're going through you know don't even stoop to that level meanwhile Monica and Josie are inside making fun of the whole situation and this was like real immature on their part because first of all Josie had nothing to do with the situation she just wanted to be in the mix and you know her and Monica just they just a mess but moving on um in the next scene I know Monica I think it was Monica, Liza, and Josie. They met up and they discussed, you know, the situation that happened with her and Zakia. And, you know, Monica's going to say, oh, you know, that same night after the altercation with Zakia, we were sitting in my car listening to Little Kim CDs all night. And I'm like, y'all are so fucking immature. Y'all are immature. If you really trying to, I don't know if they trying to be friends with each other, but if y'all have this common bond and y'all are like in a sister circle, why would you do that? That's so immature. Like grow the hell up. So then, you know, um, Liza, you know, Liza was pretty much being the peacemaker that episode. And she's like, well, I think, um, these ladies need to go to yoga hot yoga so they could sweat out their frustration they could relax and they could probably sort out their problems so it seemed like a good idea in Liza's head so when they went to hot yoga Zakia and Monica were just tit for tatting the whole time until you know they grouped up after yoga was done and they spoke about their situation nobody knew that Monica was filing for her divorce from Flex so, you know, that kind of brought her and Zakia closer and to a mutual understanding and whatnot. So then, um, Tashira and Cheryl met up and, you know, they were speaking to, um, they were speaking, is it a private investigator? Yeah, they were speaking to someone who was a private investigator and they were trying to find out, um, you know, if they could get in contact with DMX's other kids. Because Tashira's main goal is to, you know, have her kids meet their siblings, you know, even though I know that's a tough situation. But, you know, Tashira's being mature about it because she wants, you know, her kids to know their siblings. So they hired a private investigator and, you know, I guess he's going to start the process of helping her find the other kids but that DMX has. So... We then go to, um, Josie and Liza, and I think they mentioned, this is when they mentioned the, um, eye gazing party, because I, I think, was it Josie's idea? I think so. And they mentioned the eye gazing party, and they're just discussing that, and, um, from there, we go to the ladies. Um, I'm just skimming through the episode. From there, we go to the ladies, you know, getting their hair and makeup done for the eye gazing party. And they're like, you know, cracking jokes. And it seems like Zakia and um, Josie are getting along. So at the eye gazing party, you know, the ladies are sitting there and they're, you know, acting goofy, having fun with the eye gazing party. And in the end, they have to write down which guy they felt, you know, like a mutual connection with. So, you know, 
the majority of the ladies were like they didn't feel a connection with any of them but Zakia said that she felt the connection with one of the guys whose name was Jamel ironically Josie said the same guy so you know they asked the guy well you have two women here two beautiful women here who said that they felt the connection with you which one would you choose he chose Josie come to find out Josie only picked Jamel because Zakia picked him she looked at Zakia's car and saw who Zakia wrote I'm like this bitch is so immature I don't like Josie as you can tell I don't like her and even in the next episode I'm about to talk about I still don't like her so you know the show ends on that note and then we get to the episode that come that came on tonight so in the beginning it started off with um I think this was like the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy and you know it's talking about um it starts off with Monica she's trying to get her divorce papers signed or whatever so that she can move on and because and due to the hurricane I think she called her lawyer and her lawyer said they couldn't meet up so you know it was she couldn't sign she couldn't get the divorce paper signed and Josie's like well maybe it's a sign that y'all need to be together and Monica's like no we can't be together anymore like time is is over like it's, we had our time and it's done so we can't be together anymore so you know Josie was being real supportive and Monica was like when is you know she's like everybody is on his side including her mother yeah she said her mother is siding with him because when they were together her mother had financial gain from funk, 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 funk master flex which i'm not surprised because that's how family gets and it's like soon as you they feel like you ruin you know their chances like people like that are opportunists so her mom is an opportunist and, and um monica feels bad because you know she's going through with the divorce but if you're not happy, then you don't need to be in that relationship. It's not going to be healthy for you, and it ain't going to be healthy for him. Fuck what everybody else think and feel. So, you know, Monica was like, well, when is it? You know, when is someone going to say to me, Monica, it's okay? So Josie said, Monica, it's okay. And I'm like, okay, you know, that was a nice thing to do. Um, She just, you know, offered a shoulder to cry on. That was the only time I actually liked Josie. <laughs> So moving on, um, Monica and Cheryl went to Tashira's house to check on her because of Hurricane Sandy. So um, they walk in the house and they notice that she basically has a DMX shrine in her living room. And, you know, Tashira is basically like, well, I keep it up for the kids. And Monica and Cheryl was like, okay, but this is why, you know, you're stuck. This is why you can't move forward with your life because you basically have, you know, a shrine dedicated to him. In order for you to move on with your life, you would have to get rid of this stuff. So, you know, Tashira never really realized that, you know, this is what was hindering her. So they came together and they were like, okay, well, we're going to help you clean out this clutter we're gonna help you let go so they um they also made mention of the um private investigation looking for dmx's kids and you know monica didn't know that he has six other kids outside of their marriage and monica also revealed that flex had a child outside of their marriage too so you know, they shared that common bond and they, you know, they agreed that they would come and help Tashira clean out the clutter, get rid of the stuff. Like, because they were like, you know how much this stuff would cost? Like, you know how much we would give for this stuff? And I agree. A real award, real pitches, all of that, they will make money on eBay. Definitely. <laughs> eBay, Craigslist, Amazon, they will make money selling all that stuff especially because it's real so hey go for it so the next scene goes to Liza and Josie meeting um it looked like they were by Bowling Green or something they were somewhere in Manhattan 
And, you know, they were talking about Sandy and Josie was asking if everything was okay and, you know, if her house was okay. And Liza was like, you know, everything was okay. She wasn't in her apartment because she lives in lower Manhattan. She wasn't in her apartment when the hurricane went on. Her area was zone A, so she had to evacuate. So she said they went to Queens and they stayed with family, so they were safe, but... You know, they didn't, well, nobody, none of us New Yorkers knew how hard that hurricane was going to hit, but it hit hard. Hurricane Sandy was no joke, like I keep saying. So, you know, they were discussing that, and then Josie brought up that she spoke to the guy from the eye gazing party, Jamel, and he said that he wanted to take her out. So she said she didn't feel comfortable going out with him unless her friend could come. So he said he would bring a friend, they would date, and you know, it, you know, it would all work out. So Liza agreed to go on a double date. So um, they also were saying, I don't know why they keep bringing Chris Humphreys up on this show. Because if she was thinking, if she was thinking about getting with Chris Humphreys, that would be mad awkward because she's Lamar Odom's baby mother who's married to Khloe Kardashian. And Khloe Kardashian is Kim Kardashian's sister. And Kim Kardashian is still married to Chris Humphreys. That would be awkward as shit. So I don't know why they keep trying to get this girl to get with Chris Humphreys. As far as I'm concerned, Chris Humphreys don't need to be in the public eye no more than he is. Because that boy reputation is like tarnished now. So um, then we move on to them going, actually going on a date, and they went rock climbing. So you know they having fun climbing the rocks. Rock, Liza, that girl could climb them rocks. She got up there. She was like cock, cock, cock. <laughs> like she was up there, and she got up there quick. So you know she was having fun. You know for once we actually got to see her you know, happy and chill, and then, um, you know, Jamel did the rock climbing, and then Josie got up there, so when Josie got up there, she was trying to be cute, putting her little booty out, and I'm like, okay, whatever, but then when she tried to be cute on the harness, when she was on the floor, her dumb ass ran into the rocks, I was dying, I'm like, good for you, bitch, <laughs> so then they were, um, they were talking, or whatever, and of course Josie the shit starter brought up you know um she's like well do you know who her ex is and the guy was like no I don't know who her ex is and she was like Lamar Odom so as soon as she brought up Lamar Odom to Liza the guy asked her about Lamar and Chloe and you know it is tiring constantly you know talking about Chloe and Lamar like they're married leave it alone She's clearly trying to move on, but you know, Josie had to bring it up. So then Liza was like, but do you know who her ex is? And she told him, my ex is Floyd Mayweather. So, you know, they cracking jokes or whatever. And um, Jamel's friend is like, well, I could take Lamar Odom. I can't take, you know, Floyd Mayweather. So, you know, the date seemed to go along, you know, it seemed to go cool. And the girl said that they would um, actually go on another double date. So next we go to... Josie, Cheryl, Liza, and Monica talking about, um, Josie and Liza are telling the other two about their double date and how it went good. And the girls are like, okay, good. You know, you're getting your feet wet. You're having fun. Finally. So then, you know, after they discussed that, had a couple of laughs about that, they went on to talk about Tashira and how they would like to help Tashira. Because, you know, they told, they told Liza and Josie about... Um, how Tashira has a shrine and she just needs to get rid of stuff. So they agreed to help. And Cheryl and Monica were like, well, Zakia is going to be there too. So, you know, Josie is like, well, I'll be chill off the strength of Tashira. But, you know, me and Zakia don't get along. So the next scene went to them all gathered together at Tashira's house, helping her take the stuff down. And they're sitting there discussing it. And um, Tashira has his stuff, you know, some of his stuff in a box and whatnot. So they're sitting there talking about it. And out of the blue, Zakia kicked the box. So, you know, I didn't really 
take it any kind of way. I didn't think nothing of it when she kicked the box. But, you know, she did it off the strength of Tashera. Like, you know, get that out of here. But, you know, Josie, of course, had to say something. She started something and her and Zakia was going back at it. And Zakia said to her, bitch, I wish you would hit me. Hit me. And watch you get Mayweather. I'm like, Zakia got to be from Brooklyn. That's a Brooklyn girl. She got to be from Brooklyn. <laughs> but it's just... Josie is a shit starter. Like it's like she likes drama. From the first episode, I could tell she liked drama. You claim you and Floyd still messing around and he's engaged. Drama. You started an argument with Zakia at Monica's party and it had nothing to do with you. Drama. You brought up Lamar Odom on a double date and I'm pretty sure Liza didn't want to be put on the spot like that. Drama. Like, drama. And then, did what you did at Tashira's house. And Tashira didn't even care that she kicked the box. She's like, so fucking what? I don't care. Like, it's a box. And it's his stuff. We getting rid of it. So, eh. Whatever. So, um, you know. They, that, you know, argument subsided. Then they went upstairs to Tashira's disaster room, she called it. And that was more of, like, um, what's the kid called it? Like a hip hop hoarding room. And that's what it looked like. He had jackets everywhere, pictures, swords, like all kinds of craziness. So they helped her get rid of his stuff in there. And now she could breathe easy. But Tashira admitted that she didn't really want to come into that room because at one point that room was a loving room, it was a family room. And it's like now that they're no longer together, she was she wanted to she would much rather pretend like the room doesn't exist as opposed to actually going in there and throwing stuff away. I get it, but you know, the girls felt her pain. They were all crying. They all consoled each other. It was beautiful. So, um, the next scene we go to is Monica and Josie meeting up. And Josie tells Monica that she got a text from Floyd and he was basically saying that he didn't want um them to celebrate their son's birthday together that year um that you know that this year so um Josie was a little hurt because they always celebrated their son's birthday together and she felt some kind of way so Floyd was basically saying oh I'm throwing a party for him I'm doing all this extravagant shit and you're not invited I'm like damn that's evil so you know Josie felt some kind of way and she feels like She's trying to, she was like, being his baby mother is not easy. And trying to be his best friend is not easy either. And I'm just like, well, just be the mother of his kids. Y'all don't have to have no type of relationship. Just be the mother of his kids. You know, don't badmouth their dad. And th that's that. Like, y'all can coexist. But if you don't want a relationship with him, then leave it alone. So the last scene we go to is a releasing party and each lady is saying something that they would like to, you know, let go of. Like Tashira is like, she's ready to let go and like live her life. Um, you know, a lot of them are like, I'm ready to let go of anger and stress. So they had these nice little like um lantern, not lantern balloons, but they like light up. So they press the button on the top and they let the balloons go. And I'm like, that's a nice, you know, that was a nice bonding experiment as well. So, I mean, this episode was good. Despite a little bit of drama, this episode was good. I'm actually liking Starter Wives. Like, I'm liking this show. It's a pretty good show. So, um, next week, looks like it's going to be good. And it looks like everybody is, like, on to Josie's bullshit. So... I'll be here next week to vlog about it. So I'll see you guys throughout the week. I'm going to vlog about Real Husbands of Hollywood because I'm behind on that. Um, I also mentioned in the next vlog, I'm no longer vlogging about the sisterhood. And the sisterhood, Snooki and JWoww and Courtney and Kim. Because I don't think y'all really care. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to try and like do time management with each vlog because a lot of stuff come on on Tuesday nights and I can't vlog about all of them at once especially because I have a four month old who demands my attention so I'm gonna just vlog about my wives 
Real Housewives, Love and Hip Hop New York, um, Starter Wives, Bad Girls Club Atlanta, Real Husbands of Hollywood, and I did not forget to do my special vlog. I'm going to do it this week. It's just been a tough couple of weeks, as always. Life of a mommy. But um, I'll definitely be here tomorrow to vlog. Hopefully, I'll watch Real Husbands of Hollywood tomorrow. If not, I'll do a vlog anyway. If it's not about Real Husbands of Hollywood, I'll do a vlog anyway about something else. So, see you guys then. Thanks for watching.